country. You'll know when you're there. And soon as you enter, you'll feel like a bear. A great grizzly bear. A Berenstain bear. We are the Berenstain Bears. Mama! Papa! Sister! Brother! We appreciate each other. We live in a place of a tree. Mama, Papa, Sister, and me. More bear and stink bears. That's your factual. Big boy bear. Rabbit Rouse. Oh, who is she, honey bugger? I'm the mayor. Lots, lots more. Bears galore. You may think that bears start our show. Well, it does. My dear. Good morning, Papa. What are the cubs up to this morning? Oh, they're playing hide and seek. It's good to see how brother and sister get along. Uh, most of the time, anyway. <laughs> yes, but I do wish sister had somebody her own age. A little girl her own age to play with. Brother has cousin Freddie and the other boys. Five ten, sister behind the hollyhock! Five ten, sister! In clear! In clear! <laughs> I think I've had enough of hide-and-go-seek. Fine. What do you want to do next? I know what. You wait right there. Okay, up off the stump. Because what we're going to do now is play tea party. All right, Jolly. You sit here. You sit here, snoozer dog. And let's see now. Tea party? Hey, <laughs> give me a break. Okay, we're all set. You sit there and be the papa, and I'll sit here and be the mama. Hey, give me a break, sis. Boys don't play tea party. Why, if Cousin Freddy or any of the other guys saw me, I'd never hear the end of it. You mean you're not going to play? It's all set up. You really ought to find another girl to play tea party with. Besides, I'm going skateboarding with Freddy. All right for you! You, you tea party pooper. Hmm. Well, may as well practice a little jump rope. Well, it happened again. What's that? Brother skateboarded off to Cousin Freddy's and left Sister all by her lonesome. Oh, I wouldn't worry. She's got her forest friends, Frog and Butterfly, to play with. Frogs and butterflies are all very well, but it's not the same as having a cub friend your own age. Look, a moving truck. Somebody must be moving into that empty tree house down the road. It certainly would be nice if they had a little girl sister's age. You never know. Hey, look at that! Somebody moving into the empty tree house. I wonder if they have any cubs. That was quite a trip. Sure feels good to get out of the car. Hi, welcome to the neighborhood. Hello there. Thanks for the welcome. What's your name? I'm Sister Bear. I'm six years old and I live just down the road. Hi, I'm Lizzie Bruin. And this is my papa and mama, Mr. and Mrs. Bruin. I'm six years old too. Nice to meet you, my dear. Now, if you come to excuse us, we have things to see to. May I try your jump rope? I can do red hot pepper, cinnamon, salt, mustard, vinegar, onion, ginger, red hot pepper. Well, I can jump to a thousand. I can do a thousand and one, a thousand and two, a thousand and three. We'll just see about that. Let's have a jump off right here and now. Let's not, and say we did. Say, isn't that a 
a playground over there? Well, yeah. Last one there is a rotten egg. That new family does have a little girl. Oh? She certainly is a lively little thing. She may be just what sister needs. Race it to the top of the jungle, Jim. You're on. <sighs> Seesaw time. Seesaw, Marjorie Da. Jack shall have a new master. He shall make but a penny a day, cause he can't go any faster. <clears throat> Come on. Let's take turns pushing each other on the swings. How would you like to go up in a swing? Higher! Up in the sky so blue! Higher! Oh, I do think it's the pleasantest thing that ever a cub can do! Higher! Hey, wildflowers! Let's pick some for our mamas! Right! Yeah, how is sister making out with her new little friend? Well, they certainly have led each other on a merry chase. See? I told you there was nothing to worry about. Hmm. They seem to be heading home and... How nice. They each have a bouquet of wild flowers. Here's some flowers, Mama. For me? How thoughtful. It was Lizzie Bruin's idea. Lizzie Bruin? Yeah, she just moved in up the road. Oh? What's she like? Here, let me put these in water. Well, let's see. Her name is Lizzie, she's six years old, she's an only cub, and she's a little bossy. Oh? I caught some glimpses of you out the window and you certainly seem to be having fun. Oh, yes, I had a lot of fun. A little bossy and a little braggy. <laughs> Bear's residence. Sister, uh, just a moment. Sister, it's for you. Hello, this is Sister Bear. Hi, this is Lizzie Bruin. Want to come over and play school? Okay. Bring some of your dolls and stuffed animals. Mine aren't unpacked yet. Okay, see you in a couple minutes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and here, sister. My mom and papa are still fixing up and putting away. So we're gonna play in here. Who'd you bring? I brought my best doll and stuffed animals. And this is my special teddy that I've slept with every night since I was a baby. Hey, this is going to be fun. Please be seated, sister. It's time for your lessons. First, I'm going to teach you the alphabet. The first letter of the alphabet is A. Now, just a minute. Who said you were going to be the teacher? When I play school, I'm the teacher. And not only that, I already know the alphabet. Sister Bear, if you don't sit down this minute, I'm going to keep you after school. Is that so? Well, if you don't give me that pointer, I'm going to keep you after school. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> no, look what you did. You broke my pointer. Here, keep your old pointer. I'm never going to play with you again. Never is too short for me. Good. I'll just take my dolls and go home. Sister's mad and I'm glad. Lizzie, Lizzie, in a tizzy. Sister's mad and I'm glad. Lizzie, Lizzie, in a tizzy. Back so soon? I'm never going to play with that Lizzie Bruin again. She's much too braggy and bossy. I don't need her to play school with or anything else. It's much better playing by herself. 
When you play by yourself, you can do anything you want without worrying about that Lizzie Bruin. That's true. Of course, there are some things you really can't do very well by yourself. Like what? Well, you'd have a pretty hard time pushing yourself on a swing. And I'd like to see you ride a seesaw all by yourself. Most games like hopscotch and jacks take two to play. And it certainly is nice to have someone you can laugh and giggle with. <laughs> Maybe so, but Lizzie is so bossy and braggy. Why does she have to be teacher when we play school? It seems to me that Lizzie isn't the only cub around here that's a little braggy and bossy sometimes. And of course, there is one thing you can do much better by yourself. What's that, Mama? Be lonesome. Somebody at the door. Why, hello. When Sister took all her dolls and went home, she forgot her teddy. And well, I knew it was her favorite, and she slept with it since she was a baby, and thought she might miss it. Why, thank you, Lizzie. That was very thoughtful of you. Thank you very much. And you can be teacher if you want to. Or we can take turns. Terrific! Last one back to your garage is a rotten egg. <laughs> Cubs. <laughs> Prepare to meet your noom. Papa, why are you so determined to catch old Jake the giant catfish? Why? Because he's there. I know you're somewhere down there, Jake. And today, I'm gonna catch him for sure. Because of this surefire, can't miss catfish bait. Catfish bait? That's right, a plastic mouse. Old Jake won't be able to resist it. A plastic mouse? Papa, cats don't have anything to do with catfish. What makes you think old Jake likes mice? Well, I've tried everything else. Jelly beans, worms, bagels, burritos, catnip. But, Papa, a plastic mouse won't work anyhow. Back off, sis. Old Jake's a friend of ours. We don't want him caught anyway. Oops. That's right. Hey, I got him! I got him! Old Jake's fallen for my trusty plastic mouse bait. All right, you old catfish, I've got you now. Come to Papa! <laughs> old Jake, still safe. I thought I had him that time for sure. Look at this. Nothing but an old boot. Don't feel bad, Papa. Mayor Honeypot only catches old soda pop cans. The old cans, old boots. Folks are using the lake for a trash can. Yeah, and all that junk they're throwing in is polluting the water. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. Anyway, I've caught my quota of garbage for the day. I'm heading home. So long. See ya, Papa. You know, Lake Grizzly really is a national resource. And if folks are using it as a dump... No ifs about it. <laughs> yeah, folks are using it as a dump. <laughs> It's old Jake. How you doing, Mr. Jake? Want to see what them scallywags been tossing in here? Get a load of this. Take it easy. Yeah, we're on your side. Yeah, sorry. They got carried away. It's just that this mess gets me hotter than a hornet's nest. How are you two coveroos doing anyway? We're fine, but it sounds like you've got a bad cough. <laughs> yeah, well, not just me. Everyone who lives in the lake's coughing up a storm. <laughs> you fish, turtles, frogs, everybody. How come? All that dead, burned pollution is choking everyone. I tell you, we're drowning in this stuff. <laughs> Gosh. This is really serious. We've got to do something before it's too late. But what? Hey, maybe Professor Actual Factual will help us. Good idea. He's an expert in environment. 
environ environmentalist. Environmentalist? Yeah, he knows all about land and water and everything. And he knows a lot of stuff about pollution, too. Don't worry, Jake. We'll get you some help. Okay, Cubberoos. I'll be waiting. <laughs> and it better come quick, or I'm gonna have to switch to bottled water. <laughs> oh, dear me. This does sound critical. Lake Grizzly is Bear Country's reservoir. It supplies all of our water. You mean we've been drinking that stuff? Yeah! Is there anything we can do? First, we must survey the entire lake to see exactly what we're faced with. Lake Grizzly's awfully big, Professor. Hey, maybe we can use the Bearsonian's observation balloon. Capital idea! Quickly, my little friends, into the gondola and to your stations. The balloon's getting pretty full, Professor. We must wait for the exact moment, which is now! <laughs> All right, now, start scanning the shore for polluters. Do you see anything? Do I? There goes a soda pop can into the water. And some food cartons. Oh, oh, I think I've got something big. Here, take a look, Professor. Right here. Let's see what we have here. How awful. Totally inexcusable. I don't understand how some bears can be so irresponsible. Hey, there's a guy pouring crankcase oil into the lake. Yeah! One of the worst pollutants known to bear. Hey, Squire Grizzly's yacht! And look, Squire Grizzly's ship! Dumping garbage overboard! A very high grade of garbage, no doubt. But still garbage. I think we've seen quite enough. And from what we've seen, it'll be very expensive to clean up Lake Grizzly. But if it isn't done, their country will be in big trouble. Then what's our next step, Professor? We must go underwater and explore the floor of the lake to see just how much junk there is to dredge up. Underwater? Ready, comes. Ready, Ready Professor. Professor. Okay, into the drink. Goodness gracious. They certainly do have a little problem down here. Yeah, sometimes our room gets pretty messy, but never this bad. That's because folks don't throw all their junk into your room like they do here. <laughs> Hi, Jake. Yeah, good to see you, Cubberoos. Been waiting on you. This is our expert envir environmentalist friend, Professor Actual Factual. Howdy, Professor. You think we can turn this blasted pollution thing around? Uh, before I make a judgment, I must see just how much contamination there is in this lake. Well, if it's a tour guide you're needing, I'm your fish. <laughs> just tag along after me. <laughs> Hope you don't mind the mess. I didn't have time to tidy up. <laughs> <laughs> by getting oxygen from the water passing through their gills. Yeah, but the water's gotta be clean. Otherwise, <laughs> we got problems. Look, over there! Yikes! Nothing to worry about. It's just old Nicky. A good guy to have on your side. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Poor old guy. Used to be able to ink up a storm. Now all he can manage is a few smudges. He moves by taking in water and squirting it out. And all this pollution is giving him indigestion. Now what say we finish up our <coughs> junkyard tour? An excellent suggestion. Lead the way, Jake. 
I must say the contamination is unbelievable. Cleaning it up will be very expensive. Well, I might be able to pay for it with uh, something I've been saving for a rainy day. It sure is a rainy day. It's raining trash, junk, and look out! Oh, bed springs. It's right here in this uh, underwater cove. Wow, it looks like an old pirate ship. Right you are, Kubaroo. It's old pirate grizzly's lost treasure ship. The lost treasure? Wow! We're going in, so stick close. Look out! We'll pay for the cleanup. But we'll need some way of reminding bears not to dump garbage in the lake. Otherwise, it will get polluted again. Too bad that neat pirate ship sunk. Yeah, I bet bears would pay to see something like that. Of course, the ship could be a floating museum. And the admissions will fund our ongoing fight against pollution. An excellent idea, Cubs. But the ship's underwater. How can it be a floating museum? Oh, it's quite simple, really. A well-established technology. First, we must attach my deflated observation balloon to the vessel. Okay, Oscar, do you hear them? Stick those doohickeys on those doojiggers over there. Then we'll re-inflate it with helium. Yes, it's reminding bears not to dump trash, and it's earning enough money to keep Lake Grizzly clean forever. All right. Hey, Kubaroos, Professor, down here. You know, we just want to say thanks for what you're doing. What? Oh, <laughs>